if we just duck down here and watch our stealth meter, the, the eyeball turn. Oh, shit. What the hell, stealth meter? You're not working. <laughs> I was going to say the eyeball turned from red to white, and that usually means you're safe, but uh, apparently not. This crab is smarter than the stealth system in the game. Welcome back, everybody, to Osiris New Dawn with the Discovery Update. I'm an old guy gaming, and we're going to pick up right where we left off um, in continuing to, to look for a base location. So it's been about um, maybe three hours, I think, since I uh, recorded the first episode. And just in between that time, the devs already released another small update. So I'm sure they're fixing a couple of bugs and things like that. So bravo to them. Bravo to them. Okay, so our number one priority right now is to locate uh, a base location, uh, a, ba a place for us to put up our base. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can either um, f pick a spot and, and build, and you generally want a relatively flat. So if I was going to build straight up from scratch, this would not be a bad place to do it because it's a nice flat area. Okay? Um, or the second way you can do it is you can find... Um, um, a, a ruined habitat and you can um, fix that up and make that your base and, and if you do it that way it's, it's a little cheaper uh, to do so um, let's actually use our shard blade on this guy uh, to get a little more leather I think we probably already have all the leather we need but let's just get a little extra just in case uh, we might need it for later and so what we're going to do is we're going to do the second thing we're going to look around for uh, a ruin and uh, we're going to fix that up and that's going to become our base so there's pros and cons to both ways um you know the the advantage to building from scratch is you can pick your location and you can set the the base up exactly the way that you want it uh, whereas if you build an existing um you know you have to you're kind of stuck with however it was originally set up um but again it is it is much less expensive uh in terms of resources and whatnot to do that so before we proceed, uh, we do have to keep an eye on the storm situation, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about the map. And by the way, I haven't seen anybody's comments from the first episode either, so just kind of keep that in mind. I'm recording these uh, sort of kind of back-to-back -back just to get a few episodes uh, out there as soon as possible. Uh, anyway, so let, let's talk about the map a little bit. So you can see up in the upper right-hand corner, of course, I have a mini-map. And if I press the, the minus key on my number pad... I can zoom in and the plus key will zoom out. So you have basically three levels of zoom there. Um, you can also open up the F3 menu. And this brings up the actual map itself. And this is actually pretty useful because it allows you to then specify certain things that you want to look for. So fabricated basically means find anything that is like a building or a POI. Low density means find um, ores that are in the low density class. And I can either just look for low density ores, or what I can do is I can um, specify an actual um, ore to look for. So if I'm looking for lithium, for example, I can select that and then lithium will show up on the map. However, we need first, before we can actually do this though, we need a scanner. So we're going to get a scanner either by looting it or by eventually making it if we don't find one before you know we get the equipment that we need to make it. So um, in terms of the map itself, you know, if you've, if you've spent enough time uh, on here or if you do, you know, spend enough time on here, you'll start to kind of familiarize yourself with the place. Uh, but to the north, that little area up there where you see the trees, that's called the Bloodleaf Forest. And I just know that because, you know, I've been playing it for, for quite some time now. And then to the south, uh, right through there, actually more to the east, I guess, uh, we have what's called the Fungal uh, Thicket, I think it is. Uh, so these, these big, you know, glowing mushroom types of trees and so on and so forth. And, you know, the way the map is laid out uh, on Proteus here is that you, you kind of have like a play field area and then you have uh, like the deep desert. And if you go out into the deep desert, um, you might get attacked by these ginormous worms. I mean, worms that are as big as that pillar ginormous worm. They're absolutely huge. The thing is, though, is the worms had been disabled in experimental and I don't know if they are re-enabled in this new stable release. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to find that out at some point you know, go out there and see if they're actually back. Okay. Um, so yeah, so, you, so you do want to, you know, start to familiarize yourself with the map and start to become, uh, you know, uh, use landmarks, and, you know, to kind of know where you are. Now, the other thing that is going to be super useful once you get the scanner is it's going to also show you again, like I said, where the ores are. 
Um, so you just press F3 and you can, you know, you choose, you know, which type of ore you want to look for and then you select the ore and then your scanner has a certain range that's kind of about the same size of, of this. Um, uh, well, I guess you can zoom out of this too. Um, and then, oh, you know what? Actually, it looks like it's... It looks like it's showing the fabricated stuff already. So that's these orange things. So yeah, I guess we don't need the scanner for the fabricated stuff, which is good. Uh, so we're going to actually work our way towards uh, this one here and just see what's there. Uh, but it kind of gives you, if you zoom out, a little idea of what the map is. And then every, everything that's away from the topographical area is just the, the deep desert, okay? Uh, so this is our play field that we're going we're gonna to be in. Um, I also have a spreadsheet that I've put together that, that has the locations of a lot of the ores uh, from Experimental. Now, I don't know for sure if they're in the same exact location here in the new stable release, so we'll have to kind of, you know, check that out as we go along. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way towards the uh, the orange thing, and uh, we should find a prefab there or a POI and see if that potentially has... Um, you know, some wrecks and stuff that we can can build our base in. Okay, this is... No, oh, that's what it's shown us. Okay, so you're going to come across these, like, wrecked satellites, and they're randomly placed in the world, and if you log out and log back in, then they'll be somewhere else. But you can salvage those, and you can get, you know, parts from them. You, whoops. You can get, like, wires and circuit boards and broken stuff like that, but obviously that one got glitched up into the to the pillar there, so we're not going to be able to get to that one. So, anyway, let's go ahead and... Oh, wait a second. Okay, I'm... Uh... Hold on one minute. We were down here, right? So, let me look again. You, as you can see, you can really take fall damage in, your, in here, but there is uh, suit upgrades that you can do later that can help with that. Okay, so that was the fungal thick... Okay, yeah, the, the trees... Yeah, that's the bloodly forest. Never mind. We're good. We're good. So let's go towards the Bloodleaf Forest. Now, there's a couple of important things in the Bloodleaf Forest. Uh, I'm going to actually stop and let's see. How are we doing? Yeah, we're, we need some something to eat. So let's eat the rest of these red berries. And we're going to probably have to harvest some more, and I'll eat this uh, cinnafern too. And then let's take some water. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to also take this little bandage here too, just because we kind of banged ourselves up a little bit. Now, we do have um, six... Um, emergency rations, so MREs, uh, that we can use in the early game, but those are going to run out, you know, fairly soon, and then we're going to have to pretty much take care of ourselves. When you enter a new region, you'll it'll tell you that you're in the Bloodleaf Forest, and it'll also show up on the mini map, um, and also here. So there's different um, areas of interest, I guess you could call them uh, across the map. So this is Helios Hill, this is the Bloodleaf Forest, um, and there's usually um, you know, important things in those areas. So, for example, for the Bloodleaf Forest, um, unless they've changed it from experimental, this is the only place you can find sulfur. Um, so you will need sulfur. We can't mine it right now, though, because we don't have a mining tool yet. We just have the bashing stone. Uh, so sulfur's in the Bloodleaf Forest. And more importantly, in the Bloodleaf Forest, we have what's called Mine 1. It used to be called Alpha Mine. Now it's called Mine 1. And if you go in here... Um, there's minerals you can mine, and there's also diamonds uh, way deep back in this mine that we're going to need later on. Now, did you guys, if you guys watched episode one, you might have remembered that I said every time you log in, you have to go back in and resave your settings. Because see, the bloom is back on, so now I have this big old glow on my screen. So I have to go into settings. I, I've already turned it off, right? The bloom off, but I have to click save and continue to remove it so I can actually see a little bit better. It's just something that, you know, they have to fix at some point. Okay, so Bloodly Forest has mine one. We will be going in there later. We don't need to go in there right now, however. It's got sulfur, and it also has the only place on the map, again, if they haven't changed it since, uh, you know, since uh, experimental, it's the only place you're going to find nitrogen here on Proteus. Nitrogen, you're going to need to make hydrazine, which is the fuel that your vehicles will need. Okay, so there's three nitrogen vents here in uh, the Bloodly Forest. So, yeah, those are the three important things that we need to come here for. Now, over here, we have a crash satellite. And sometimes the satellite will um, glitch so far into the to the terrain that you can't get to the solar panels on it, uh, which kind of sucks. But we're gonna we're gonna harvest this uh, or salvage it rather, I should say, because uh, it's gonna have some parts that are gonna potentially be useful to us. Uh, so let me get my little salvage tool out. 
Now, salvaging in the very beginning game with this tool is very, very slow. But we're going to improve that later on by, by putting points into it, which we need to look at too, as well as making a better salvaging tool as soon as we can. Uh, so later on, salvaging will be much faster than it is now, but it's just really slow in the beginning game. It's just kind of, you know, part of the progression. Okay, good. So we got a fuel cell, we got broken wire, uh, some some scrap and stuff off of that. Uh, usually you get uh, better things from the solar panels, but like I said, we couldn't reach those. Oh, I guess we can reach this here, though, this little piece. So like I said in episode one, you, you, you have to kind of move your, your salvage tool over the item until you see it, it kind of framed in green, and then that's when you can salvage it. Okay, we got some more scrap metal off of that. And we get science for salvaging too, by the way. So that's another good reason to do it. All right, let's see here. Um, I have to kind of think where we are. So we're, if we open to F3 and look in our map, uh, you can see if we, here, let's face north. So we're going the right direction. So you can see we're way far uh, to the uh, to the west uh, of the map. We're, we're almost uh, on the end of it, in fact. If we keep going this way, uh, we hit the deep desert. So that's the deep desert out that way. Um, so just, you know, like I said, you you will start to familiarize yourself with the map and the areas on the map the more you play it, just like anything else. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to keep looking around uh, for habitat stuff. Um, there's something else up here, but I'm, I'm starting to think these are actually maybe the satellite dishes and not the actual POIs. So the POIs, um, the ruined habitats, those sorts of things, they're, they're random um, on, on your map. So each time you start a new game, they're, they're going to spawn in a different place. They're not always in the same exact place. Uh, that does bring up an important point, though, and that point is that this is not a randomly generated map. The map itself is a handcrafted map, so the map itself is always going to be the same, uh, but it's just a matter of... Uh, and the, and by the way, the ores are always going to be in the same place, too, uh, but the, the POIs, the salvage stuff, that stuff can change depending upon, you know, uh, where you are. Okay, so let's go off this way. Actually, hmm, let me think about this for a second. I want to kind of... Oh, shit, that scared me. <laughs> I didn't even see him coming. Um, I want to kind of go back north. It, it behooves you, uh, if you can, to be in the uh, to be in the middle of the map-ish as much as possible, just because then, you know, because you have to travel all over the map to get stuff, right? And... So if you're in the middle of the map, you have less to travel in the, in all directions, if that makes sense. Um, so let's see. If we go here, let me face north again for a second. Okay, so we're to the west. I want to go kind of northish. Well, actually, you know what? Let's go check out all of this um, orange stuff over here first. Um, that's probably, if I remember right, that might be the Phoenix base that the quest wants us to go to. Anyway, so let's kind of move that direction, but then we can kind of curve and head north uh, after that. So there's the fungal thicket way off to the east. And I'm just trying to look while we're kind of, you know, have a high vantage point to see. Okay, there's some ruins down there. Let's go look at those. Let's go take a look at those. Now, the thing about the ruins is that you can... Um, yeah, this spawns a bunch of colossals, but we're, we're going to ignore those guys for now. Here we go. Okay. So the thing about the ruins is it's kind of a crapshoot. Um, this one, for example, is not really going to work for us because it's a standalone hallway in a, in a biodome in an airlock, but there's no actual habitat here. So, you know, we'd have, and the habitat's the first thing you have to build. So we, what we would have to do is we would have to, um, you know, build the habitat from scratch. And that's kind of what we're trying to avoid so we'll probably come back here at some point and actually salvage. In fact, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea for us to just look real quick inside uh, the crates. Now, when we sal the thing is, is I have to be careful because, uh, you know, because our inventory space is so low. This guy's going to come over here and bite me in the ass. Let me get this salvaged really quick here so I can get in here. Oh, for Pete's sake. There we go. Okay, they can't hit hurt us in here. So um, anything that you put your salvage tool over, if it says salvage, then you, you just salvage it, right? But some things on these structures are actually um, in place, 
and you don't want to salvage those. And the way you can tell, I, I, I don't have an example of that here. I, we could probably find an example over there. Uh, but the way you can tell that is if it says dismantle instead of salvage, then that item, that particular piece is already in place. And if you're planning on repairing this, the station, you don't want to take that uh, apart. Okay. Um, we took a, we must have taken a hit from that guy. I think he's, he got to us through the thing. Uh, let's go ahead and just do a bandage right now. Now, so, you know, we can salvage the wrecked bins and all, and, you know, these broken light fixtures, all that sort of thing for parts, but you're also going to find these crates. Now, the crates, what you want to do with the crates is you don't want to salvage them. You can, uh, but what you want to do is you want to leave them in place because the stuff that you find in here, uh, that, that's like a new icon. Cool. Uh, the stuff that you find in here will respawn each, each time you log back in. So, oh, gosh dang it, I'm going to kick the shit out of you. All right, hold on. We got to bring... We gotta bring uh, the herd on to these guys because they're just being a pain in the ass. Okay, we finally dealt with those guys. Um, one thing to know about the creatures is that if you leave the area and then come back, they'll respawn. So if I leave this valley, go over the hill, and then come back, they'll they'll, they'll respawn. So um, they do have a lot of good stuff we could harvest, but um, the problem is we're running run, really running out of space. But let, let's just uh, finish up what we were talking about here. So notice that if I put the... Uh, is this an example? We might not actually have an example of this. Okay, well, we'll see it later on uh, where, you know, you have a piece that's already in place. So what I was saying about the the crates is that you, you, you can loot them and you should loot them, but you don't want to salvage them because, you know, then they'll repop, right? So, so you'll get more stuff. So right now I'm just, I'm being very selective about pulling stuff out of here because we're, you know, we're really heavy right now. Um, but these crates are, are going to be a lifesaver to you guys in the early game because you're going to get a lot of good stuff that you need out of them. Um, so this is uh, this is stuff that we need for gardening later, but that is, that's not a high priority right now because it's going to be a while, whoa shit, before we can do that. Okay, so here's another cool thing. Over here is a rover, and we can also repair this and, and get our first vehicle. This particular one, uh, we're, we won't repair most likely we'll probably salvage it and get the parts for it later um, but you'll find those uh, around the map too that you can salvage so very useful okay so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go uh, we're gonna go northish and kind of stay in the center of the map I'd like to find a place at you know near where we were in our last experimental series because that was a really sweet location um, so we're gonna kind of start heading north and and look for for that place uh, it's kind of up that way now, this is the Tumble Basin, and Tumble Basin has um, tungsten, which is one of the hardest minerals on, on Proteus that you're going to need. It has tungsten, and it also has one other type of ore, which escapes me at the moment, um, but this is what tungsten looks like. So, yeah, it does it does look like, um, and chromium, yeah, that's what it was. So, tungsten and chromium, um, two, you know, two minerals that we're, you're going to need a little bit later on. It also has a pool of liquid down there. Uh, on Proteus, when you get rainstorms, it rains methane. It doesn't rain H2O. And so you'll find, you know, different pools in various places that you can then go collect that methane later on and use it, you know, as fuel uh, or as an ingredient to make up. Uh, I believe it's plastic that you can make from it. So... And yeah, the, the bugs, the critters in, in, in this game are, they're a pain in the ass, man. They really are. Um, so you know, after a while, they kind of become more of a nuisance than a danger. But um, yeah, they, they, they are a hassle. So, uh, okay, let's take another bandage because we're a little bit banged up here. This little valley here that kind of has like these, these pillars and this big archway is the only place, unless they've changed it since, uh, you know, since experimental, is the only place you can find 10 on the map. Uh, so these are tin deposits over there. You don't need a lot of tin, but you need some of it. So uh, we'll have to come back here later and mine this. If you guys are interested, uh, I can share out the you know the spreadsheet with the ore locations on it. You know, so you don't necessarily have to take notes on this. 
Or if you want to find it on your own, as soon as you get a scanner, you know, you can just scan for the minerals and find it this way. Okay, let's continue heading north, and we're going to kind of go through this little area here. My uh, crab scythe is getting, uh, getting in bad shape, so we're going to make a new one of those and throw out the one we have. Because remember, the, the more damaged your tool or weapon gets, the less effective it becomes. So we're going to replace that one, and we're going to drop this. Okay. So let's move through here. Kind of northwestish, west northish, and I'm looking for again, like I said, the area that I was in for the last experimental uh, series that we did because it was a really good spot and it was near mine too. Okay, there's iron here. Um, you you'll find these giant wasps in the game. They are hostile. Uh, they don't aggro on you from far away. You have to be fairly close to them before they will attack you. But yeah, they're a pain in the ass too. Okay, so this area over here is mine too. And the reason I know that is just because here, here again, I've been playing on um I've been playing on the map for quite some time, but the way you can find mine too is it's kind of in the middle-ish of the map. It's actually kind of more up in the north west-ish part of the map, but look for the satellite dish and the big solar panel and you can find mine too. Now, we're actually going to go in here for just a second. Well, hold on a second. Let me look at my inventory. So, yes, yeah, shoot. We're at 93. Yeah, what the hell, let's do it. We're going to go in here because um, not too far into the mine here, you can find a diamond, and we're going to need that diamond to make a diamond chisel. Uh, we're not going to make that immediately, but we're going to make it fairly soon. And since we're here, we might as well just grab it. So we're going to go in here. When you go in these mines, uh, they're they're really cold in here. So so, so the mines are super cold. You, there's monsters in here, too, that you got to fight. Um, mostly... As of right now, unless they've changed it here in the release version, uh, they're just skeletons in here, so the monsters aren't too bad. Uh, but it's a big maze back here. Uh, this is cobalt, which we'll get later. That red thing is mercury. Uh, but what, what you do is, as soon as you come into this big cavern here, this is for those of you who don't know this, uh, you turn left and you enter another cavern, and then you turn left again, and you come to this little room with a door that you can't get through, but there's... Um, a crate here. Here, we're gonna have to kill these guys. They're gonna come and bite us. Okay. We'll get the. We'll just get the meat off of them. Because, like I said, I think we have enough leather to do everything we need to do. Uh, where is your tail? There. Okay. And then, if you look in this crate. You can expect to find at least one diamond, and sometimes you'll find other things. In fact, in the experimental series, I actually found an assault rifle in here, uh, you know, which was a really, really good find uh, that early in the game. Because you can't make the assault rifle for quite some time. You have to actually go off the moon and travel to a different moon to get the resources to make the assault rifle. So to find one is, is really, really lucky. Um, so maybe, you know, we'll luck out and find that too. Okay, so now we're just going to go back out of here. We're going to turn right. And we're going to turn right, and we're going to get back out of this mine. We'll come back in here later and or mine one to, you know, to do some other stuff. But for now, I just wanted to grab that diamond because it's just really easy to get to, and we are going to need it again, like I said, for the diamond chisel. Okay, so let's head on back out, waiting for our stamina to come back here. There's nothing in that door. It's just kind of there. We'll use our little hover trick to move a little faster here. And head on out of the mine. Here's a pro tip for you. If you get lost in this mine, just log out of the game and log back in and it'll and you'll start right at the entrance again. So there you go. Alright, there is a, a, a crate here. Let's look in it really quick. So we got broken hose. Uh, this is cloth. Yeah, we'll take all that for now. Uh, but we really have to be careful. Okay, so our base that we had in Experimental was just right... Uh, where was that? So it was actually back over this way. So let's go there. Um, my first stable uh, release series, uh, I actually did my base right there. But, you know, the game has changed a lot. I mean, it's changed a whole lot since the last stable release. It's not even the same game. Well, it is the same game. And I mean, it's just really changed that, that much. Okay, so... Oh, shit. You stupid... Stupid, stupid monster. 
Stupid monster. Okay, so this was actually where we had our other base, and there's no there's no wrecks here. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to set up shop here again. Because remember, the, the POIs will um, spawn randomly each time you start a new map. Let's grab this crab talon because we're going to need it for our next version of the weapon. we got a snubs here that's going to want to mix it up with this. Son of a... Okay, so let's see. I was good. I had a thought. I'm trying to think. Oh, let's go up here for a second. There's a there's a, a ruined spaceship up here. Yeah, see, we're moving so really slow now because we're so heavy. All right, we're gonna. This guy's gonna be. He needs to be killed. That's all there is to it. Just kill him. Okay. Uh, we need. We gotta lighten up. So uh, let's press F1. Let's do a default sort. What can we get rid of right now? Um. We don't need these barrels right now. They're just, yeah, really heavy. Okay. They're useful. I'm not saying they're not, but right now we're just too damn heavy, so we gotta we gotta get rid of something. Okay, so over here um, is a wrecked spaceship, and we're gonna make one of these later on and go up into space, so they're pretty cool. And if you go inside the, the wrecked spaceship, there is a crate. And let's grab this, and what is this? Scrap rubber, yeah. And maybe the cloth. But I'm not going to grab the barrel because it's just too heavy. You also have, over here, a hydrogen vent. Um, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to see if there was something here we could build. Because it's really handy to be next to hydrogen. Hydrogen is the gas that you will use the most of. Because um, because it's, it's mixed with other gases and used in, in recipes. And so you really, you know, ideally you want to try and be somewhat near hydrogen vent. Because you're going to use hydrogen gas more than anything else. Uh, all right, we uh, need to do something about our hydration and our uh, food. So I'm just going to eat an MRE for now, and that gets us about halfway back. Let's eat another one. Okay, good. So hydration. Part of why my you know food and drink and all that is running out so fast is because I'm sprinting all over the place. But you know we need to we need to get a base going here pretty soon. So we're sort of kind of working against the clock. Okay, so that's a tungsten. So that goes back to Tumbo Basin. All right, let's see here. Let's just kind of move to the northeast now. Thought I heard something. Oh, you know what, guys? I'm also, by the way, um, where is our graphics camera mouse? Here we go. I'm turning the music off uh, because I got a, a copyright notice uh, on a live stream I did on Osiris. Uh, copyright notices aren't bad. Um, it's not like a strike. Uh, but when you get a copyright notice on your video, that means you can't monetize it because somebody has claimed the rights to the music. And sometimes, you know, that happens to us YouTubers when we're playing a game um, and the music in the game, you know, is, is copyrighted. And so uh, we're not going to have any music. But when you play this game by yourself, turn the music on because it's pretty cool. It really is. All right, let's see. What do we want to do? I want to move. We, we came from the south. Yeah, we were kind of going northeastish. That's what we were doing. This is the Valley of Tin. The Valley of Tin. Sometimes if you get to a steep hill and you you just kind of, you know, jetpack and sprint up, but the game will just kind of blip you right up. And then other times it takes forever to climb him. So you just have to kind of see what it'll do. Okay, let's go this way. And we want to kind of look over here and see if we can find anything we can fix up. Okay, Hades Hive has um, two chlorine vents uh, that we'll need. And you can also, if you go up to these, there's two crabs down here. I'd rather not mess with them right now. But if you go up to these things, or one of these things, you can actually enter the hive. And it basically puts you... Uh, oh, did they remove that? Or am I just in the wrong place? Yeah, we got the crab's attention. Oh, here we go. So you could also go into a hive, and it's really a similar, you know, type of situation to, uh, you know, to a cave. Except for, because I see this in here, it makes me think maybe it's not, they're not complete. But it's it's a similar concept, you know, to, to the mines. It's, it's a kind of a cave system. That you have to kind of find your way around in, and I don't, 
I don't know if there's any resources or anything. It's kind of creepy down here, man. I don't think there's any resources down here. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say they haven't implemented these yet. Because there's nothing in here. We're going to get ourselves like hopelessly lost. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing anything in here. So I, I, it doesn't look like this is implemented yet. But at some point, you know, we'll be able to come down here and get like resources and there'll be monsters to fight and things like that. But it looks like it's not, uh, not done. Okay, so we come back to here. Um, it might, I don't know if it goes around in a circle or what it, what it does. Yeah, we're, we're pretty freaking lost now, aren't we? I just wanted to make sure, you know, I not only just, you know, show you guys a hive, but I wanted to make sure that there actually isn't anything in here. So I'm not seeing it. Oh my God, though. This is, this place is enormous. Okay. We're going to, we're going to probably take the easy way out and just relock <laughs> because I am so freaking lost right now. Uh, let's just go a little further because maybe it'll circle around and we'll find the little white ball exit, but I'm kind of thinking maybe not. I don't know. Isolated shelf. Um, yeah, I think we're like really far underground now. Let's just go. This is going up. Let's just see what happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, we'll get to these um, like unfinished places. And I don't know if we would fall off the end of the world if we stepped out there. I've never had the balls to try it. So and I don't want to lose all my stuff. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, okay, yeah, looks like maybe we did make it to the end of the hive. So this is future content, guys, future content. It should be pretty cool once they finally implement it, but right now it looks like it's still just empty. Okay, I'm going to be a wussy and log out, um, and and then I'll <laughs> log back in so we, we get out the entrance because I don't want to spend more of our, uh, of our recording time trying to find my way back out here because it could take a while. So let me just restart the game here, and then we'll continue on. Okay, cool. So... It uh, logged us back out. So we were coming from the south, and we were kind of going northeastish. So let's see if we can get away from this damn crab. Oh, I let my hover run out. Ouch. I knew that was going to hurt. Okay. If we... Good lord. If we just duck down here and watch our stealth meter, the, the eyeball turn. Oh, shit. What the hell, stealth meter? You're not working. <laughs> I was going to say, the eyeball. Wait, where did he go? Yeah, he's right there. The eyeball turned from red to white, and that usually means you're safe, but uh, apparently not. This crab is smarter than the stealth system in the game. What happens if we go over here and duck down? No, nope. he, he wants to fight. Okay, all right, man. You had your chance. Now you're dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, stealth system in action. Not. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. It scared the hell out of me. Okay, so let's see. Northeastish. Yeah, there's a tree we could discover, but I'm not really too worried about that right now. We need to find a place to live. Somebody was telling me in the comments too that uh, not not the comments for for this series but for my experimental series that the map is now bigger than it was before um and when we go to f3 i don't let, let's just see if, if something pops up again here i'm not sure if that's really actually showing us fabricated stuff or not i think it isn't because i think we need our scanner for that all right let's just look out this way we kind of came from over there through the arches all right well Let's see. How far to the north are we? Can we tell by looking at the map here? Yeah, we're we're getting close to the north. We we we, we kind of came, you know, from here. So why don't we cut to the east and, you know, go this way for a little bit. This biome here with the blue grass, it, it's really neat looking, but the grass is, you know, kind of a pain in the neck. Um, 
And you can turn the density of that down too, by the way. So if you turn the terrain detail, I don't think this affects anything other than grass. Um, that'll help your frames and, you know, sometimes it can be hard to find stuff in this grass. So, uh, doing it, you know, at half, at half mass, there's a, not a bad way to go. That's cobalt too. But again, we can't do anything with that right now. So let's go east-ish and just kind of keep looking for, um, you know, a ruined habitat. So it seems to me like maybe they're a little sparser than they were before because it used to be just all over the place unless we're, you know, we just got some bad RNG going on here. Uh, but let's kind of move through this area. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff popping up right over this ridge. So let's see what uh, what we got. Ah, there we go. There we go. Okay. Um, so let's go check this place out. Just because it seems like these things are a little bit rarer, we might end up staying here no matter what. Looks like we have two habitats and no biodome, which isn't the best scenario. Okay, that's a habitat, and that's a habitat. Darn it. That means we'd have to build a full biodome, but it does have an airlock, so we wouldn't have to build an airlock. Um, And we have a, a, ro a rover right here that we can fix up. Okay. I'll tell you what, you guys. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut the camera. No, actually, I'm not. I'm going to end the episode. My goodness, I, couldn't, I can't believe we're that far into it already. I'm going to end the episode here, and I'm going to... Remember where this place is, right? So uh, I'm even, I, I can just write down the coordinates, right? So we are uh, currently at 9.5 lat, which means we're north. And we are at 1.8 launch, which means we're just a little bit to the east. Okay. Uh, I'm going to off camera look around uh, a little bit more and see if I can find a better location. If I can't, then we will come back here and this will become our base, okay? It's not a terrible location, it's just really, really far north. So, you know, when we have to go down south to get stuff, we're just going to have a, a long trek to go. Um, But, yeah, so I, I just, you know, before we totally commit to it, I just want to check and, and see if we can find a better place. Um, Let's take a quick look. Oh, my goodness. We got a bolt rifle and ammo for it, you guys. Oh! That is a beautiful find. <laughs> All right. It even, it's not even completely broken. It's almost completely broken. It's so broken that it's probably not going to do much damage. But you, pretty soon, we'll be able to make a repair table. We can repair this, and then we're going to have a bolt rifle. Oh, my goodness. That was a wonderful find. Absolutely beautiful. And I'm so heavy, I can't hardly move. No, actually, my head's getting caught on the thing. Um. Wow. Okay, let's take the water. The rest of that's, yeah, you know what? We need the hinge, too. This, your your head gets caught easily on this dome thing. I, I can salvage it, but I don't have room for the, uh, you know, for the stuff. Here, I'm trying to get back into. Here we go. Okay, I want the I want the hinge because we need that to make a, a bin. So here's what we're gonna actually do. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I found a bolt rifle. That is so good. That's like basically like the game's sniper rifle. Um. Here's a very important note for you guys. Never, ever store anything in these crates. Remember what I told you earlier? Oh, good. We got a scanner. Awesome. This is like freaking Christmas, guys. Um, uh, remember what I told you earlier that uh, these cr crates reset every time you log in? Well, that's why. If you put your stuff in here, log out, log back in, you will lose it. Uh, I am speaking from experience, too, by the way. Okay. Uh, I'm going to grab bandages because, you know, then it'll respawn later for us. Uh, good. we got a medikit, another scanner. We only need one scanner, though. And we'll take the water and the, the scrap rubber. The rest of that stuff I'm going to leave because, you know, we're so heavy already. Uh, here's what I think I'm going to do right before I let you go, okay? Um, let's build a uh, just a basic storage container. So we're going to go to... Well, no... Okay, sorry, I'm, I know I'm a little bit scatterbrained here. Instead of doing that, I'm going to assume for the moment that we're going to we're gonna live here. And so what we're going to do is this. We're going to go into F2, we're going to go to Structures, and we're going to build the Scrap Hut. Except for, doggone it, we need 
a three more makeshift patch tape. All right, I had to go uh, get some more purple berries uh, to make some more makeshift tape. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the hut, um, the scrap hut, which the quest wants us to do anyways. So that requires seven scrap metal and four makeshift patch tape. Um, you use your left and right mouse buttons to rotate it. So um, if you hold down the shift key, then you can, you know, have a much fi more fine-tuned type of rotation. Um, one thing this game doesn't do is it doesn't remove like, you know, the grass and stuff. And that's part another reason why I'm not real thrilled about staying in this spot. Uh, but here, let's do this. Let's put this over here. Uh, you can use the scroll wheel to move it up or down, you know, to adjust for the train. And we're just going to put this right here. So I'm going to tap the F key to confirm, and then I'm going to hold the F key down to actually build it. Make sure you hold the F key down until it's completely built, or it will only be partially built, and you'll have to repair it later. Once this is down, then if you go in here and you press F, you can you then set a spawn point and you save your game at that point. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to utilities and I'm going to make a scrap metal chest. Uh, it needs more, uh, or wants rather, me to make some more uh, makeshift tape. So let's do that first. Um, actually, I have plenty of cloth, so let's make a couple of these. See, that's why you say why I said earlier you have to have this tape for like damn near everything in the early game. Uh, so let's see, we want to pick scrap metal chest. Now again, right, left mouse button to rotate. We're just going to put this right here. We're going to press F and build it. And you're going to use a bunch of these little chests in the early game until you can make depositories. Uh, let's go ahead. Can we make another one of these two? Let's take a quick look. Yes, we can. Okay, and so this will these will stack. You can stack them like way high in there if you want to. Um, so we're going to stack this one on here. And now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to offload some of my stuff. And then I'm going to go out off camera, and I'm going to look and scout around to see if there's a better location. And if there isn't, then we'll come back here, and this is where we're going to do our base. If there is, then I'll move everything. And it's not a big deal to, to make one of these later. I'll move everything over to the new location, and then we'll start the next episode in that uh, area. Okay? All right, guys. Uh, last thing before we go. We need to look at points. I, I was actually going to do this at the start of the episode. I completely spaced it off. So I'm going to press the F6 key to bring up the skills menu. And let's see. We have nine stat points. So we're going to go... Um, we're going to put three in health, three in strength, and um, two or... Uh, two? Three. Yeah, three in stamina. I'm, I'm sorry. I got sidetracked there for just a second. Okay, so that takes care of our physical uh, attributes. Now, uh, let's like look at our skill points. So again, salvaging is super, super important to us right now, as is moving across the land um, on foot. So I'm going to put a point into increased hover boot duration, okay? Uh, craft faster, that's not super important right now. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to get to these faster salvages and, fast, and, the, and salvage bonuses. So we have, um, we have a salvage bonus here, so let's take that. Uh, oh, I guess... Uh, are we out of points already? Oh, yeah. I guess we're out of points already. Just spending it on that. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to work. Uh, I'm going to get this guy, and then we're going to go into this tree, get the salvage faster and the more bonus. That's the highest priority right now for engineering. Okay. For science, uh, how many points we have? We have 62 science points. Like I mentioned before, I want to get um, uh, into here so we, we don't. our body doesn't use as much water. And I'm going to take this all the way to the top. Uh, which we have done. Okay, so water is no longer going to be a problem. We still have to drink, but we want to drink nowhere near as much. So, so water is going to be really easy mode. Uh, next thing I want to do is, you know, work on getting these two done. So when we eat, you know, the berries and so forth, we get more nutrition from them. And I, I, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but this might actually apply to all nutrition. I'm not really sure about that. I haven't really tested that. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get those done. And then we'll, you know, we'll start worrying about working on health and some of the other things. Now, for combat, you know, melee is king right now, as is durability on weapons. But we did find, you know what, though? We did find that, uh, that, um, that bolt rifle. The thing is, is we're, we're not going to be able to make ammo for it once we run out. So we're going to probably have to use that for extreme emergencies. Um, so mining damage is very important. Gun durability is not important right now. Um, weapon durability is... But we, you know, here, and here's the thing about this skill tree. It needs a little more work because I, I can't remember if I talked about this or not, but some things are a little bit out of place. Like, for example, it's forcing me to go 
to gun durability before I can get to the stuff that really matters, like the weapon durability in the early game. You were lucky we found that bolt rifle. Normally you wouldn't do that. So gun durability doesn't help me at all, but I got to spend points on it to get to the stuff that does. So they, you know, they really need to look at that. Uh, tool durability is going to be important. Mining damage. I really like mining damage a lot. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and, and hit that. And then let's see, weapon durability. The melee damage is really important too, which is these guys here. So I think we're going to go down this tree to get to the to the melee damage. And, uh, oh, wow. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of combat. Okay, so cool. We even got to this one, and that's going to, you know, help uh, our damage. Okay, so that takes care of... Well, we still have nine combat points. Let's uh, projectile damage. This is suit breach. Tool durability would be good, too. Plus, we have another mining damage. So let's go down this tree, and we'll, we'll shoot for these uh, in upcoming when we get more points later on. Okay, cool. As you can imagine, you know, the further out in the tree you get, the more expensive, you know, these become too. But like I said uh, in episode one, you know, we you'll you'll get to the point where you'll have learned all of these points by the time you're in, in mid-game. So, you know, they come pretty easy. It's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. Science, we still have six points of science, but we can't take that one. Can we take this? No, that's eight. Faster plant growth does not matter until we have a farm. Increased fruit yield doesn't matter until we have a farm, but we are going to need to get to, to these guys. Uh, still, I think, I think I'm going to sit on those points uh, and get to these first. Uh, all right, guys, I think that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.